Another major observation made by our section on nephrology at Wake Forest Baptist involves monitoring of blood sugar control in people with diabetes on dialysis. There are more than 1,550 patients receiving end-stage renal disease care in Wake Forest Baptist uh, dialysis units, and more than half of them have diabetes, as is the situation nationally. Diabetes is the most common cause of renal failure in the developed world, and clearly it's, it's important to control blood sugars. The hemoglobin A1C assay is one of the most trusted assays in diabetes control. Actually, the American Diabetes Association now allows physicians to use the hemoglobin A1C not only to monitor diabetes control, but also to diagnose diabetes, so that's a major breakthrough. Three, four years ago, nobody suspected that the hemoglobin A1C might not be accurate in patients with severe kidney disease on dialysis. However, we were fortunate to participate with a manufacturer of a novel glucose control assay called the glycated albumin assay. And there were many reasons to suspect the hemoglobin A1C might not be accurate in dialysis. Hemoglobin lives in red blood cells, and we know patients on dialysis have low red blood cell counts, they're anemic, they require erythropoietin or hormones to boost red blood cell production. So the concern was that red cells didn't last long enough. Maybe there wasn't enough time for blood sugar to bind with hemoglobin to form hemoglobin A1C, and the assay might not be accurate. The problem was, we didn't have another assay to compare it to that might be more accurate. Well, in a number of manuscripts, we demonstrated that the glycated albumin was far more accurate than the hemoglobin A1C in patients with diabetes on dialysis, a finding that has since been widely replicated around the world. In the last year, we extended this observation. For the first time, we were able to show in a large sample of patients at Wake Forest Baptist dialysis facilities with diabetes that following them for two and a third years, measuring glycated albumin periodically throughout the year, we could actually predict who was going to end up in the hospital, even who was more likely to survive based on the glycated albumin. The hemoglobin A1C, the assay that the world is using and many don't suspect the problem with, doesn't predict anything in patients with dialysis. So we were on the, are on the forefront of detecting the correct assays to use in patients with kidney disease. At this time, the FDA is considering the glycated albumin assay, and should it become widely available, we strongly believe it's got a major role to play in patients with advanced kidney disease. The hemoglobin A1C uh, clearly has many problems in patients on dialysis and probably should not be ordered in this patient population. This is another example where a clinical observation that was made within the preceding three or four years has now been extended in a long-term longitudinal follow-up study of patients in our Wake Forest dialysis program, allowing us to show the predictive ability of new tests of glycemic control. This is extremely exciting, and I believe that it would have taken multi-center studies to show this in the past. But because Wake Forest program is the largest academic provider of dialysis services in the United States, we had the power and the sample size of patients that we were able to show this in a single provider dialysis program. This is just another unique aspect of Wake Forest Baptist nephrology. We have opportunities to extend research here that have implications for patients around the country and around the world.